Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, medical oncologist and thoracic specialist at uh, Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle, Washington. I'm also the founder and president of GRACE, Global Resource, for advancing cancer education. One subset of people with lung cancer that have had a lot of challenging times in terms of new treatment options is small cell lung cancer. Now, lung cancer is divided into non-small cell lung cancer, which is the clear majority, about 85 to even 88 percent of patients, and the remainder having small cell lung cancer. Now, small cell lung cancer has an effective first-line treatment with chemotherapy, typically a combination of a platinum drug, cisplatin or carboplatin with etoposide, and this chemo combination often leads to significant tumor shrinkage, but it doesn't last as long as we would like, and frustratingly, when the cancer progresses again, what we call relapsed small cell lung cancer, it can be much harder to treat effectively. Uh, and in fact, we've been looking for years to find new treatment options, but they've been hard to come by, at least anything that's better than our rather paltry options we have now. There is a treatment that is FDA approved called topo -tecan, but it's a challenge and requires five days of IV therapy to get rather modest benefits. So we're looking for new treatment options. One is the possibility of actually giving uh, chemo with a, a novel treatment that's derived from marine animals. It's called lerbinectidin, and this new agent has been studied in combination with an older chemo called doxorubicin that has activity in small cell lung cancer. And in a smaller study of a few dozen patients that combined uh, the chemo with lerbinectidin in patients with previously treated small cell lung cancer, the response rate is 67% uh, or so. So two-thirds of patients actually show significant tumor shrinkage. Now we always need to be cautious about small studies and reading too much into them because very often when they're studied in a bigger setting they tend to not be as impressive. But even if this uh, concept is studied further and isn't anything close to two-thirds of patients showing major tumor shrinkage, if it was only 30 percent or 40 percent, uh, which would be in the range of half of what we saw in the, in the smaller study, that would still represent a significant breakthrough. Now this agent and combination is being studied directly compared to one of two treatment options in previously treated patients with small cell. One of those uh, options is topo -tecan, the agent I already mentioned, and the other is a three-drug IV chemotherapy combination called CAV that has been uh, looked at for uh, years and has activity, is used largely outside of the United States. And this is a study that will uh, enroll about 600 patients, half of them getting the new combination with lerbinectidin, half getting chemotherapy of which one of these choices and we can see whether there is a significant benefit to a newer approach compared to one of these older ones. It's been an impasse that has been quite hard to break. Another option that is being looked at is a class of agents called PARP inhibitors that can uh, cause breaks in the DNA. And this uh, class of agents has been compared to chemotherapy alone. Actually, it's been studied most in comparison of PARP inhibitor plus chemo versus first-line chemo. There was a study called ECOG 2511 that was presented at ASCO 2017 that uh, looked at the agent viliparib, an oral PARP inhibitor, in combination with first-line chemo, cisplatin, and etoposide compared to the same chemo alone. And that showed a trend toward uh, a better overall survival and a significant improvement in the time before the cancer had progressed. But the magnitude of the difference is pretty modest in the absolute time benefits. It's under a couple of months. and so. In a world where we're really looking for bigger hits than that, it's not clear whether PARP inhibitors will really generate enough enthusiasm to be studied further, but they at least represent an avenue that, that could be worthy of further study if we identify which patients 
are the most likely to benefit from this class, and that's being studied in some research. So it's certainly a line of inquiry and research that could bear fruit if we can identify exactly which patients are the major beneficiaries of PARP inhibition combined with chemo.